When it comes to learning art, it can be a frustrating and oftentimes maze-like process when you're just starting out. What supplies do you buy? Do you go digital or traditional? Do you really have to master realism and anatomy before you're allowed to venture forth into a style that you admire and maybe that inspired you to do art in the first place? Well, I'm not here to answer all of these questions, though there are some I certainly can. Hi, I'm List Eclipse, and today I'm going to give you six pieces of actual advice that I hope you'll find more useful than the usual mantra of just draw all the time every day, or just draw a box, or study the masters. This kind of advice, while well-meaning and may make sense to a more experienced artist, because that's what they did, can feel a little bit too vague for somebody just starting out on our journey. We've already done for break the, the breakdown, but for beginners, these kinds of advices can feel very broad, maybe even condescending. I've been a freelance commission artist for roughly 10 years now, give or take, a little more active in some areas than others, so I hope that my advice can be at least directional for you. So, without further ado, on to the tips. The first one being, if at first you don't succeed, figure out why. This is a line from the original Magic School Bus, a show that I watched a lot as a kid. <laughs> Miss Frizzle offered this advice down to one of the students, and it really stuck with me. Usually the line goes, try, try again. But, you know, you can try something as many times as you want. But if you never identify what was going wrong in the first place, you're always going to be doomed to repeat your mistakes. I actually almost scrapped the piece I'm doing in today's B-roll because I hated the sketch just so much. Nothing about it looked right to me. So I pitched it at a group of friends and one of them came back with, is it the jawline? To which I then went and edited the jawline off the recording because I was already almost so fed up with it that I'd even deleted the video file. Although as you can see, I restored it. <laughs> and behold, suddenly I was happy with it. I can still identify an issue with the piece and I don't think it's a pressing one and I don't hate it, nor would I feel bad about displaying it. I might try to fix it if this was work for a commissioner, but because it's just personal work, I don't really find it important. <laughs> Sometimes what it takes is an objective eye to identify where you're going wrong and what needs fixing. Some ways you can do this yourself would be by flipping your canvas horizontally or vertically. especially if you tend to draw characters facing one direction. Seeing the canvas from a different perspective might help you notice things that look off about the image, and it will allow you to identify where things do need to be changed. Hopefully. <laughs> Next up, you must cultivate a love of the craft before you can pursue learning. What I mean by this is, when it comes to learning art, attention economy is key. I saw a tweet by Sarah Elfagy, and I am very sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I looked up how to pronounce it and got two different options, and I went with the one that came up more, so feel free to correct me. The other day, that kind of lashed onto this point for me, and it reads as follows. I tell emerging artists all the time, you're not meant to be here if you're bored. The work can be difficult, frustrating, infuriating even, but never boring. You're responsible for how engaged you are. If you can't make the work cool to you, why would it be cool to anyone else? 
While Sarah was responding in part to an AI enthusiast who was calling the process of creating art by hand mundane drudgery, I think she's right. If you don't enjoy art, then you can't really be making it, can you? Why would you be here? Just for clout? This is why my first advice to new artists before telling them which books to get for study or how to improve fast, whatever that means for them because improvement looks different for everyone, is to cultivate a love of the craft. To cultivate a love of the craft is to sit down and immerse yourself in the feeling of art, whatever tools you're using. Draw your favorite anime and manga characters, or just play with the pastels and see what colors come out. Lose yourself in episodes of Bob Ross, and just have fun with it, without knowing about anybody ever looking at it, or anyone seeing it but you. Even the end product doesn't matter. All of us are here because we fell in love with the process of creating art at one point. And all of us stayed the course because we felt like art was fulfilling by itself long before we started receiving any feedback in the form of critique or social media numbers. Art has long been a human activity that fulfills the soul. And as far as I'm concerned, Talent is something that doesn't exist. In the famous words of Bob Ross, talent is nothing more than a pursued interest. Anything you're willing to practice, you can do. Which leads me into the third point. You absolutely must get comfortable with failure. Let's be real. Not everything you make is going to be some Michelangelo blackbuster. And it doesn't have to be. In fact, there's actually a graph that gets passed around in artist circles every now and then that illustrates exactly what it feels like to learn art. Basically, your eye and your muscles don't learn at the same rate. At times when your skill level outpaces your personal ability to critique your own work, you'll feel really, really good about your artwork. However, there are also times when your personal knowledge and I will outpace the work you can do with your muscles. And at that point, you will feel like an abject failure. Because no matter what kind of image you have in mind for your work, you just can't execute it to your satisfaction. This is completely normal. Every artist goes through this at some point. Failure is completely inevitable, but it's actually also extremely important for the learning process because it gives you the opportunities you need to go into the if at first you don't succeed, figure out why point. Failure leads to learning, which leads to training your eye, which leads to success. There will come a day when you feel generally satisfied with most of the art you create, but it doesn't mean you'll never fail again. Learn to take it in stride, and accept failure as an important part of the process. Next, stylization is not earned by mastery of realism and anatomy. You actually have to practice the style you want to have. Sometimes you'll hear, peop hear people say, oh, you have to study the basics and realism before you can actually learn to draw anime or cartoons. And my honest opinion is not that they're wrong but more so that they're thinking about it the wrong way. Studying the basics, such as shape, form, figure, light, shadow, and color, is all important, yes, no matter what style you're going for. But as for drawing from life or realism, I genuinely don't really think you need that as much as some people, particularly older folks, seem to think. Because here's the thing, if you're only ever intending to draw anime, you need to practice that style. Becoming a master of realism, and then expecting all of that knowledge to transfer over once you start drawing anime, is a recipe for disaster. And I've seen this happen more than once, where an artist will spend years studying realism and life drawing only to jump into anime once they feel like they've finally earned the right to stylize and then 
end up horrifically disappointed because they're more or less starting over from scratch at that point. Studying anatomy and doing life drawing can only help you if you branch out to different styles. I'm not contesting that at all. It does help. It's very important. Knowing the generals of human and animal anatomy can provide you a fantastic baseline for recall to draw bodies from scratch and without a reference. But to truly master a style, you have to also draw in that style and study it alongside any other styles you're looking to pick up because all styles come with their own guidelines on how to effectively convey them. Stylization is not something you have to deny yourself, especially if it's what you truly want to do and you feel like practicing realism is a huge slog. That's just going to turn you off of art completely and kill your love of the craft. All artists need to balance between work and play. Practice with intent and try master studies. Some people will tell you to draw every day or practice every day but not many people will tell you what or how to practice or why. The best way to practice is not drawing every day. You need rest, but working on identifying where your weaknesses are and then seeking out material to learn how to be a little less weak in those areas is a good way to learn. I am a fully self-taught artist. And aside from some classes in high school, I never really had any form of formal education in the arts. I simply sought out information that I needed when I needed it, and that's more or less how I still learn. I do recommend the Morpho books for basically anything regarding human anatomy though, personally. <laughs> Master studies can also be a great way to learn new techniques. A master study is a type of study where you pick out a piece of art by somebody you admire and that you consider your superior in the craft and then you try to replicate that image. An effective master study is one that teaches you the information that you need which means that you don't need to copy the entire piece but rather parts of it to help you understand how the master did what you're trying to learn to do. For example if what you're struggling with is how faces work, search out an artist whose style is similar to the one you want to learn. And then practice first drawing eye by eye to replicate the way they draw faces. And then repeat this from memory. Looking back and taking note of what you did differently from the master until you can effectively piece together the building blocks of the picture and apply them at different angles and contexts. This type of learning is called active recall and it is some of the best types of learning that you can possibly do. Last but certainly not least, you will receive critique from everyone everywhere. Learn whose critique you can trust. When you post your art online, everyone is a critic. Everyone, even if they have no idea what they're talking about or why you did something the way that you did. Have you ever seen that TikTok trend where the people go, we're posing next to art that we can make. But if you actually challenge any of those people to actually make that art, they truly have no idea where to even begin. Sometimes getting the opinion of non-artists can be valuable. As I mentioned above, artists have a habit of looking at the technical details when giving feedback and sometimes missing the big picture. But a lot of the time, what stands out to a non-artist can be very insightful as to how your art will be perceived. The challenge is in sorting out what information and critique is useful to you and what isn't. As a general rule, I personally consider unsolicited critique to be completely worthless. If I didn't ask for advice, I'm not going to take it. And I'm mostly just going to assume that the one handing it off is a jerk. You know what they say about opinions. They're a bit like assholes. Everyone has one, but not everyone wants to see it. 
That being said, if anyone approaches me with, hey, would you like some critique? Yeah, sure. I'll typically learn, be willing to hear them out. Because learning to take and give critique is a process, one that requires respect. And especially if you're posting your work online where it's going to be judged, it is a process that is more or less mandatory to do. You don't necessarily have to have a thick skin, but you do need to be able to step back, take a deep breath, and take what might be useful from the words. Hate mail is never to be taken seriously though. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have to specify that, but I wanted to make sure that you knew. Good critique tells you what you're doing well, while also pointing out areas you could be doing better. It's okay to just want praise. Praise feels good, but when you need to grow, it's okay to ask for criticism as well. In the same vein, never let someone hide behind is just constructive criticism when they're actually just being mean and bullying you. If you don't feel okay about it, don't let them keep going. It's okay to say no. My best advice is to collect a group of people whose opinions you trust and respect. Artist or not, if you surround yourself with people who aren't afraid to tell you their honest thoughts while also supporting you as a person, you'll be well on your way to having a viable support network. I suggest joining some art discords here and there. There's lots of them, and most of these have a critique channel where you can post your art and ask for specific or broad feedback. I've had lots of valuable insight come from these servers. Just take what you find useful from what's given to you, and leave the rest at the door if you can't use it. But, with all that being said, I hope that you found this ramble insightful, and if you did, consider leaving me a like, since it really helps me out in the algorithm, or subscribe. Or if you didn't like it, go ahead and dislike, that also helps me out in the algorithm. <laughs> And if you think I missed some advice that you'd give, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. If I think more, if I think of more, I'll make part two, but until then, 